I will start with a brief overview of the procedural background of this evaluation. On 8 of July uh, of 2022, the Commission sent you a request for the submission of the five-year declaration of assets and personal interests. On the 16th of July, you submitted your five-year declaration. The Commission asked, also asked candidates to voluntarily complete and submit an ethics questionnaire. You did not fill in this questionnaire. The Commission sent you two rounds of questions on 13th of September and on 12th of November, respectively. You were asked a total, of, total number of 18 questions, including 35 subparts, and 20 of the questions included a request for further documentation. According to Article 3, Paragraph 4 of the Evaluation Rules of the Commission, a candidate may not provide information, documents or other materials during the hearing if the Commission requested these earlier and the candidate did not provide them within the time specified. Unless, of course, the candidate provides sufficient justification for not providing the information as requested. Members of the Commission will now start with asking you questions. Mrs. Nadezhda Rybczewski will start with asking questions. We will try to keep our questions short and to the point, and we ask that your answers be short and to the point as well. Nadezhda, you have the floor. Thank you. Hello, uh, Mrs. Rusu. First of all, as you can see in the facts in front of you, the first issue we'll try to address is uh, non-disclosure of bank accounts uh, and also uh, failure to submit annual declarations. Namely, in your 2012 and 2013 declarations, you did not disclose four bank accounts namely two of yours and two of your husband's. You have a table in front of you. I will not list all of them. For 2012, uh, we mean bank account 2010 number one, opened by you in 2010, and bank account 2012 number one of your, for, of your husband, opened in 2012. For 2013, you had four bank accounts, so besides the two of 2012, two extra. One one opened on your name in 2013, and another one on your husband, also in uh, 2013. In response to Commission's question as to why you did not disclose these bank accounts, you explained that, in your opinion, the bank account opened in 2010 had no funds on the date of declaration, and which means it was not a financial asset that you had to declare. The other bank uh, account was a salary project, and you already declared your salary as income. The bank account 2013, number two, was an active bank account on uh, which you received 3,000 lei in 2013. Regarding your husband's uh, account, they were all they were both salary accounts, and you declared all of his income in the respective uh, section, in the income section, not in the bank account section. So please confirm that you did not disclose the four bank accounts in your declarations of 2012-2013. Is that right? Yes, I confirm I did not declare, and as I answered, so it was. This is how I interpreted the law. Now, having analyzed many answers of the candidates before me, I understood that um, I should have uh, done differently, but what was done cannot be done differently. It wasn't intentional. It was uh, caused by an erroneous interpretation of illegal provisions. Okay, I understand that. Then we will move to the second aspect. I just want to make sure that you confirm that you should have declared the bank accounts according to the legal provisions that were valid at that point. Yes, I understand and I confirm that I should have declared even if there was uh, no money on uh, the account. And um, from the perspective of assets, 
Well, it wasn't a financial asset, but the law was formulated in uh, this way, and it should have been declared. Thank you. According to the SCM decision of 4th of February 2014, you have been suspended from the position of judge for the period between May 5th, 2014 to October 2nd, 2017 for a child care leave. Your suspension ended on October 2nd, 2017 when you resumed your activity as a judge. On March 30th, 2018, you submitted your annual assets and personal interest declaration to NIA, but you uh, filled it only for the year 2017. On uh, September 13, 2022, the Commission asked you why did not you submit uh, the annual declarations for the years 2014-2016, because the law required for you to file them. In your answer of 17th of September, you explained that you did not know that you had to submit the declarations for the period of uh, child care leave. In uh, communication, we had this uh, information, but I would like to repeat it once more. According to Article 6, Paragraph 5 of Law 133, uh, on uh, declaration of uh, assets and personal interests, you were supposed to submit your declaration within 30 days after reinstatement. Please explain why you did not submit them for that period of time. As I explained, indeed, I was not um, attentive enough to the legal provisions, and I did not file those declarations when I came back from uh, my leave. But when the Commission provided this information, I realized that I did not do this. And afterwards, I submitted to the Commission the income I had during that time, and I uh, am sorry that I was not attentive enough and I did not uh, file those declarations. I contacted the NIA and I asked them if I can file now, and they said it's not relevant anymore because now it is done electronically, but during that time it was supposed to be filed on paper, the procedure was different. Mm, so now I, I haven't uh, yet decided if it is necessary to, but I collected all the information and I probably should file that uh, declaration, but it wasn't intentional. Not, it wasn't done to hide some income. How did you communicate with the National Integrity Authority? I called them, so you called them. Okay, thank you. I don't have any more questions on this topic. Please explain us a bit more clearly. I wasn't attentive. What does it mean? You are not attentive. You are a judge. Maybe you are not attentive when you issue a judicial decision. What does it mean? I was not attentive. In 2014, 2017, why did you, didn't you contact the National Integrity Authority back then? Why didn't you try to find out and uh, should I submit or not? Please explain to make it clear. I already provided the explanation. In my opinion, it is clear. I, I cannot repeat. But explanation, you know, if I misunderstood you, please uh, specify, do you want me to explain why I didn't call then? Because I did not know at that time. If the situation was that I saw and I read the law, then I could file the declaration and had no have no problem here. But since I explained you, I did not read that law at that time. I did not understand that I have to submit this declaration. This is how it happened. This is my explanation. You can evaluate it uh, as you seem, as you feel objective. Okay, and this is uh, not about the fact that if we're talking of a judge, the judge is not a human being and has no right to make mistakes. I recognize, yes, this is how it happened. I am sorry. 
but the Commission can uh, perceive it as they deem right. So in the period 24 September 7 of November 2019, the Supreme Council received 16 complaints from the uh, detainees from a penitentiary from Taraklia. Uh, when uh, you were uh, investigating judge, all complaints were merged in one procedure before the CSM, and the complaints were filed according to the Article 400. 73 uh, of the criminal procedure code complain against the administration of the penitentiary uh, insti um, institution concerning conditions of detention that seriously affect the right of the convicted or detained and were related to the delays in examining this type of complaints by you delaying rating between 8 and 11 calendar month. And the report of the judicial, ju judicial inspection issued in this case indicated that in your action there was a reasonable suspicion regarding the existence of the elements of disciplinary misconduct provided by um, Article uh, Paragraph 4 uh, of the Law 178 on the disciplinary liability of judges and violation of the mandatory rules uh, of the law in the process of administration of justice and the failure to fulfill or the delayed of improper fulfillment of a service obligation without reasonable justification. And by the decision from 21 of February 2020, the disciplinary board uh, um, that did not find disciplinary offense in your uh, actions. However, one of the members on the panel had a dissenting opinion stating that you violated uh, Article 12. Uh, from um, Law 544, and uh, on the 6th of October 2020, the Supreme Council of Magistrates issued a decision uh, by which the appeal of the judicial inspector has been admitted, and the new decision was issued by which you have been applied the disciplinary sanction in form of a warning. On the 2nd of December, December 2020, you challenged the decision of the Supreme Court of Magistrates and at Court of Appeal, and uh, the Court of Appeal annulled the decision of the Supreme Court of Magistrates, and according to the Article 473 uh, free, the uh, of the Criminal procedure, procedure Code, the maximum term of examining the complaint regarding the condition of detention that seriously affect the rights of the convicted or the detained is three months. And in the written communication with the Commission, you stated that the hearing on the 16 complaints were postponed for several reasons, uh, not uh, so the non-presence of failure to present the materials, uh, from absence of lawyer, medical leave of the judge. You also stated, uh, stated that uh, you examined the cases in two courts that, um, that are in an approximate distance, uh, and you did not have the physical possibility to set hearing in both courts on the same day. You declared that in uh, 2019 you have uh, worked only for 51 days. Um, in Kahul court, so you scheduled the hearing for the days you were effectively in the court. In your answers, you claim that you uh, uh, worked uh, from 2018, um, and uh, in March, December 2019, 211 working days uh, were there, and you worked only 51 day at the uh, Kahul uh, court. You also stipulated the following information about the leave. So in 45 days in 2019, uh, in May 2019, uh, personal travel outside the country, uh, then you you visited the United States of America in 2019, a professional visit, a personal travel outside the country in November 2019, and in 2019 you've taken unpaid extra leave for the care of a child aged, uh, so from 8 November uh, 2019 till 11 May 2020. Okay, so the questions that result from this context, please confirm that between January and May 2019, you received 16 complaints regarding the condition of the detentions that you should have examined within three months from receiving them. 
So, before answering to these uh, questions, I would like to tell you the following. The uh, questions are uh, referring to my financial integrity or ethical integrity. Uh, what I just read, it's related to the ethical aspects. Okay, but the disciplinary uh, responsibility is different from the ethical one, and uh, the infringements in that sense are different from the ethical ones. And um, I wanted just to make sure that this is in the competence of the Commission, taking into account that there is already the final decision on this case, a final decision. If we established that we uh, ask you this question, it, questions, it means that the Commission has the competence to ask you this. So once again, if you, if you confirm that in the January, May 2019, you received 16 complaints regarding the condition of detention that you had to examine within three months from receiving them. Yes, I have received. Okay, please confirm that all 16 complaints were examined by you with delay varying between 8 and 18 months. Yes, I confirm. Please confirm that you explain to the Commission that the delays in examining uh, those uh, complaints were due to failure to present the materials from the penitentiary, absence of lawyer, medical leave of the judge and of the clerk. Yes, I confirm. In your explanation to the disciplinary board, you mentioned lack of clerk. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Okay, if yes, what steps did you uh, take in order to ensure that you have a clerk? I have contacted the president of the uh, court and I asked for a clerk. Okay, how do you comment the information from the decision of the Supreme uh, um, Magistrate, Court of Magistrates that the president of Kahul district confirmed that you had a clerk during the period when you were supposed to examine those complaints? I can say that this was just a declaration, but it was not verified, because indeed my clerk was in medical leave, long, prolonged medical leave, and he had a surgical intervention. And in Taraklia, there is only one clerk that speaks Romanian, and all my files related to the penitentiary were in Romanian language. It is not possible to examine the files in other uh, headquarters because the penitentiary, uh, penitentiary is in Taraklia, and it must be examined where the complaint was made. Okay, thank you. Please confirm that you uh, stated in your written answer that in 2019 you only worked for 51 days in Kahul court and you scheduled the hearing for the days where you were effectively in the court. Yes, it's true. Please explain where did you work the remaining 160 days in 2019, if you say that only one fif only 51 days you worked. Uh, I had the medical leaves in uh, that year, and I worked also at the court from Dubasar, uh, from Kriulen region, Dubasar headquarter, because I had some files, files that were uh, put into my responsibility, and I had to examine those. When have you been transferred to Kriulen? I was transferred in Kriu to Kriulen in October 2017. Okay, in 2017, when I came out of my maternity leave. Okay, for what period of time? For uh, uh, six months and then for a year. So October 2017 uh, till October 2019, yes. Okay, but you were transferred to Kriulen. How were you able to work also in Taraklia? As an investigative judge, I made a request for a new delegation for uh, Kriulen um, court, but it was uh, dismissed. And uh, the second day, I had to start my work in another court. And I mean, uh, in so it means that you, you were there physically six months? No, I was for a year in Kriulen. 
but the delegation can be extended with another six months, but not more than one year. And then it has to be another appointment uh, if uh, the, the judge is to continue to examine the cases in that uh, court. And another delegation of mine was uh, dismissed, was uh, rejected. So it means from 2017 October, you were there till uh, October 2018. Uh, you asked for pro prolonging and it was rejected. And you continued to work in Taraklia. Am I right? Yes, you're right. Okay, so then what cases were you examining? Because uh, the files, the files that I had in my responsibility that were from 2018, from the period, uh, previous period, that you didn't manage to uh, examine in that period. Yes, exactly. Uh, I was uh, receiving files uh, till the last day of the delegation. Okay, please confirm that in May 2019 you had two business trips and in November 2019. So you had two personal uh, uh, travels outside the country trips. Uh, actually, it's uh, a mistake. In May 2019, uh, it was not in Dubai. It was in Italy and then in Switzer to Switzerland, and it was during three days. In May, where have you been in May? In Italy? Yes, in Italy and then to Switzerland. For how many days? Three days. It was Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Okay, three days in May 2019. But what about November? In November 2019, I was in uh, maternity leave. But where have, when have you been in Dubai? In November. Okay, so in November you were in Dubai for how many days? Uh, for um, 10 days. Okay, what measures did you uh, take in order to make sure that uh, your files are being examined while you travel? The moment I left, I didn't have uh, working days. I was in my childcare leave. And uh, uh, Friday, of, uh, Friday uh, the evening I left, uh, and uh, Saturday and Sunday, these are not working days. Days. Yes, but in November, I'm speaking about 10 days in November, but in November 10, 2019, I was not officially working, I was in child care leave. Okay, before going to child care leave, what measures did you take in order for those files to be taken care of. So did you take any measures? Because we speak about eight months, 11 months of examination of some files. This is a long period of time. I understand that I want to, and I want to communicate to the, to tell the commission that when I was uh, appointed as uh, uh, investigative judge, I did not give approval for that. And I was named, appointed without my approval. I was actually dealing with uh, Common, uh, uh, with common law processes. So when uh, the judge, uh, the, the um, person who was taking this decision uh, took the decision, I was contacted by the uh, Supreme Court of Magistrates. I said that I do not approve because I cannot be every day there to examine all the requests that come there and must be examined in the same day. For example, uh, cases related to some measures that uh, must be examined in the same day with the receival. And then it was delayed. After one week, the president again made a request and again without my approval. And it was admitted, I mean, it was approved. And I didn't have any possibility to refuse and I had to examine them because all of my attempts to uh, communicate with them and to, uh, to rationalize the process, uh, they did not uh, end up successful with the success. So after that, the explanation was that I was the only judge that can be named as uh, investigative judge in this area. So after that, 
We can say that the problem was uh, uh, when uh, the complaints that were uh, placed at the central office in Kahul were sent to me without uh, a clear program of, uh, um, uh, of sending the, the files of, uh, of distribution of cases. But it was unsuccessful. So. Okay, uh, let me read you something that was uh, established by your pr in your procedure. So, the request for 30 May 2019 didn't happen because the judge was in a training in Chisinau and the 23rd of September was the new appointed date, but it didn't happen again because the uh, judge was in uh, uh, vacation and then the next one was appointed for January 2020. How do you explain these delays? As it is written, this is how it happened. I was delegated for a training by the Supreme Court of Magistrates. So it was, uh, I was delegated, so Supreme Council of Magistrates. So uh, they delegated me and I went there. Uh, then I was on medical leave and of course, uh, this was the situation. I was sick. I mean, it's not something you can choose. And then, if you attentively examine the materials, I said that I was diagnosed with a tumor and I had to uh, go through the process of evaluating the dynamics of my health uh, during every month. Uh, so every month I had to uh, have some short medical leaves. Okay. And I believe that uh, every person uh, has, uh, can have such a situation in life when uh, he just uh, cannot control uh, the situation. It's not about personal reasons. It's not about ethical uh, issues. And uh, this uh, file, uh, this case was established for, was uh, uh, placed for general January, probably not for me because I was not working at that period of time. Okay, do you have anything to complete for this uh, sub uh, this subject, this issue? Yes, I would like to add to this, the, to this the fact that the file was sent to the disciplinary college and the uh, uh, procedures uh, were uh, revised and the decision was that it was not a disciplinary infringement from my side, but after approximately five months, it was uh, a complaint because the term was uh, is shorter for the complaint uh, for the Supreme Council of Magistrates. And this was just because I uh, believed that I am discriminated by the um, uh, Supreme uh, Council of Magistrates when I requested to be transferred to Chisinau and I actually uh, asked to um, uh, to revise the decision of the uh, council members uh, because it was, uh, from my point of view, it was a discriminatory decision on me, uh, for me, because uh, I have children, I have uh, my many children, and I was in, in uh, childcare leave uh, for uh, some period. So after five months, uh, that complaint was made, and I personally see this as uh, an intimidation tool against me. And I am glad that the court has established by the end of the day that uh, I am, I was not doing this intentionally and I didn't uh, commit any disciplinary um, infringements. And uh, you didn't speak about this, but uh, actually it was a separate opinion. Uh, uh, it was also uh, uh, a separate opinion uh, from one of the members from the uh, from the council. So it was a dissenting opinion there. Okay, thank you. Uh, Madam Russo, good afternoon. In the context of the last subject, if you allow me uh, a question. So this uh, sanction, 
This warning um, from the appeal court on the 29th of November 2021, uh, they cancelled this, one, this uh, decision. Can you explain, please, uh, what was the basis for this uh, acceptance from the Court of Appeal? Uh, was this related uh, to some uh, um, procedural aspects or uh, it was not proven? Uh, uh, what was stipulated in the decision of the mm, disciplinary yes, council. They actually based on the fact that um, their decision based on the fact that my actions are not uh, uh, in the context of the disciplinary uh, issue. Okay, I, I accept this uh, answer. I would like to continue with another subject related to your activity on the social media. So you already saw the facts, and uh, the Commission uh, uh, said that in uh, uh, the year 2000, that uh, you, you have received an additional leave um, in November uh, 2019 uh, till May uh, 2020. Starting from uh, May 2020, you were re-established uh, as a judge in uh, uh, Kahul, Taraklia, and through the decision of the uh, council, uh, you were uh, placed as a judge, general judge, and starting from uh, November 22, you are in uh, uh, child care leave. And uh, between 6 December 2020 and 31 October 2021, while uh, exercising your position as judge, you posted at least 20 videos uh, ranging between 38 and 70 minutes on topics related to relationship, femininity, sexuality, and positive thinking on your Instagram page, where you have more than 753 followers. We would like to ask you a few, a few questions related to those videos. So please confirm, first of all, that between 6 December 2020 and um, 31 of October 2021, you have posted those videos. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Can you explain why you made this, those videos? What was the message behind those videos? So in the first video that I placed, I explained that it's a project of mine that has the purpose to clarify uh, and to inform women about different forms of violence. And uh, you, I don't know why you focused only on uh, relation, femininity, sexuality, and positive thinking, because from the very beginning, uh, and uh, actually the first uh, half of that uh, content, video content, was specifically about violence. And each video was about different forms of violence, verbal violence, physical violence, psychological uh, economical sexual violence in order to be very explicit for those women that are following me. And after that, uh, I spoke about forms of violence, and this was with the purpose to raise awareness among women about this subject. And further, I spoke about relationships, uh, women, uh, femininity, uh, positive thinking, uh, uh, sexuality, and this was in the context of the, my project of raising awareness of women about, of, about the internal and external resources that can help a woman which is in a crisis situation. It was about where they can find support. I spoke also about um, procedures uh, that are foreseen uh, in the legislation in this context for domestic violence. So this is a clear purpose that was declared from the very beginning. Okay. Just for the sake of uh, explaining why we chose these subjects, we have examined what you posted in uh, that uh, period, 
uh, we looked at the titles on Instagram of the videos and the majority, I can actually read them just to make sure that we speak about the same thing. For example, the first one is about how uh, the partners enter our life, uh, how we can treat, how we must treat ourselves, what are our responsibilities, how we ensure uh, positive thinking, uh, how we can control emotions, what is self-love, uh, how sexuality proves that, and in the context of personal development. Another, a second subject uh, is about sexuality, so it's not about violence. The third one is a video, motivational video, about how often you tell yourself uh, if you're sufficient, if you're enough, if you're uh, uh, smart, if you're beautiful. I'm just interpreting what I read here. And it's not, it's nothing about violence itself. And then uh, you speak about uh, oxytocin, which is the hormone uh, of uh, the hugging uh, in the context of love and uh, kisses and what it brings to you. Um, and uh, uh, love based on adrenaline. What kind of relations we can call uh, harmonious relations, uh, relations in harmony, uh, what it means, uh, self-respect, how uh, you can connect yourself to self-esteem, what is the feeling of guilt, what is the difference between uh, this feeling and the consciousness. So these are the subjects, uh, the Cartman triangle, victim, uh, aggressor, and here I guess you speak about violence. Yes, uh, you see the title, uh, but um, if uh, you go into the project, you will see that it's divided by in a few compartments. And those things that you are reading now about, they are specifically related to that aspect. Uh, I explained that oftentimes uh, domestic violence victims, they believe that they uh, actually feel love for the aggressor and that's why they stay. So, But I try to explain that there is a difference between the love based on uh, healthy relationships, within healthy relationships, and, uh, and uh, uh, free thinking process and uh, the other type, because when a woman is uh, in uh, toxic relations, uh, when she is uh, constantly a victim of uh, verbal and uh, physical violence, uh, the woman always, when receiving those attacks, she already uh, creates in her blood system a lot of, uh, there is a lot of adrenaline, and this uh, provokes uh, dependence on the process. And uh, I thought that uh, in order for women to better understand this message, uh, I should not focus on the negative part, because when you want to change something, uh, from the mentality perspective, you have to uh, show the positive part and where uh, the, you have to show where the focus should be, not only on the bad, because if we focus on the bad, this is how it's going to continue, but you have to see a way out of this. And uh, this positive approach, these uh, uh, things related to love, uh, which is a feeling... Uh, you can say in Russian if you want. It's a feeling that is a constructive uh, feeling for a, for a family, uh, for raising children and uh, the mental and uh, physical health of a woman. It's, it's a hormonal love, but it's based on oxytocin hormone. And I try to explain what is this oxytocin, where it comes from, and uh, why some people are uh, not um, uh, relying on oxytocin, mainly 
Normally we speak about aggressors in this case, and through those videos I try to explain this. Uh, there are some uh, researches mentioned in that video so that are related specifically to this uh, subject. Okay, but when you made this uh, project, uh, what was your, uh, uh, in, in what, uh, as, an, as an expert, or, actually I was involved in a, a legal education pro program and uh, I made uh, different, uh, I, I performed uh, a list of uh, lessons in the educational institutions in our country and I spoke to children about violence and I tried to use uh, a language that they would understand. Also sexual education for, for teenagers in order to help them better understand what is the difference between um, relationships and violence and from what age um, for example uh, they need to uh, have a consent informed consent about a relationship uh, and something that can provoke uh, that can lead to relationship and not to uh, violence I saw that the lessons do not actually realize this thing they don't understand and that's why this project aimed at informing women because I analyzed my target audience which I had on Instagram that are women with children and I uh, received during that time um, several requests, so messages from women who shared with me stories of domestic violence and I put them in touch with organizations that are dealing, which are helping women in such situations. That was the purpose. Well, from the content that we managed to analyze, I personally got the opinion that there is quite a lot of reference to psychological researches and you you present yourself more as a judge, as a regular citizen, as, as who are you making that? In, from what position do you make? In videos, I did not focus on that I am a judge. Maybe where it was relevant, I mentioned uh, some analysis uh, that I had during examining cases, but I did not refer to specific cases. But I also studied psychology. Right now I am writing my master's degree, uh, master's degree paper on psychology, so I had the possibility to be involved as an expert who analyzed the situation. And um, I uh, decided that this was relevant and this can bring a benefit. I can bring a benefit through this knowledge that we have. But at any point, did you pose as a psychologist who also provided rather individual consultations or only education? No, it was strictly general education, no individual consultations. And if I understand correctly, and I never said I was a psychologist, but you neither you said that you were a judge. No, I did not say that. Well, the image, oh, justice seekers, that someone can come before you. How do they? How would they perceive you? Seeing your picture in these videos and seeing you as a judge. Do you think there is sort of um, some, at least little incompatibility between these situations? I don't see any incompatibility here. I believe that every judge is still having another life than his or her professional life. And uh, if they have a possibility to get involved within the limits of the law, so, to get involved in processes that they believe are important and where they think they can bring a benefit, that is welcome. And this is my opinion. And I'd like to tell you that uh, even every time I have a possibility to respond to cases when I walk on the street and I see someone being abused, I, re I react to that immediately. I think that ethics of a person cannot be somehow divided or compartmentalized. A person 
Un tot întreg? Da, tot întreg. Și reacționează la ceva. And when a person responds to something, he or she responds through the lens of the values that they have. And I believed, and I still believe, that everyone, judge, prosecute, if they have a possibility to influence some processes positively, that is welcome. Because uh, by doing this, we put across a positive message that can be followed by another person. For instance, uh, if, if a society sees that a judge does not care about the cases that he sees in his personal life and he with his knowledge and capacity improves the situation as much as they can, I think that will be an improvement of the overall image and not a worsening. On the 7th of June this year, you posted also a video with a very different content. You read an address of the uh, uh, administration of uh, Judges Association, and you talk about, well, that was a call, and you talk about dangerous signals sent to the entire judiciary and society by the unreasoned refusal to appoint uh, judges, including a certain uh, judge. So you called for everyone to be against this. Uh, well, to, to, you called everyone to you support the independence. This post of yours was from your capacity as a judge. Could you please explain from your point of view? Do you think there is an issue in mixing up the image of a judge and uh, as a, and your personal life because it was the same channel, same Instagram. I think I understand uh, why you ask these questions. Do you think that sexuality or being feminine and relationships is not the most suitable topic a judge can talk about? No. Just, uh, the, the, please, these questions we want to clarify. So, because you provided very good explanations that uh, you were the only one who can provide these explanations, and this is just a continuation. So regarding your the last video, this was published on several media. It was also published on the association's website, but given that of how, given the settings of Facebook, it was published into Instagram as well. Somehow, automatically, what you publish on Facebook gets onto Instagram. And now that you said that, you saw it, I only asked you about your Instagram page, about videos there. And in your Instagram page, you have 20 videos. And the, your Instagram profile does not say anything of you as a judge, indeed. So you are there from your personal capacity, if you confirm yes, yes. And the question is, do you think that this can lead to certain ambiguities for a reasonable citizen who is following you to see from what capacity are you using that page of yours? As I said before, every post is made through the lens of a person's values. And I did not see, even from, people, from my followers, I didn't receive any comment that would show that someone was surprised or uh, upset by that. Because if that happened, I, I would have explained that right now in the comments, right there, sorry, in the comments. But I didn't get any comments like that and I never thought about it. Now that I think about, about it, I still support my answer. Every person has values and principles and they 
uh, prin activitatea lui. I expressed in a person's activity. This is how I thought, this is how I think. That this is a dangerous signal, and that is the position of the uh, Judges Association Board, and it's my position as well. And it should be known. I understand your question, but personally, I don't see any problems or discrepancy. I didn't uh, encounter, didn't get anything from the public that follows me. Didn't get any critical comments that would say that people did not get the message or uh, did not understand the purpose of why I'm doing that. Probably those 753 followers know me more, maybe personally, from other points of view. They did not have questions. The Ethics and Professional Conduct uh, Commission has an opinion about that of, since 2019, about the use of uh, social media by judges. Did you ever think or ask that commission see if they see a problem in that? Or, or maybe see the opinion of other judges who maybe asked you about uh, this? Uh, Instagram activity of yours. About my activity in Instagram, no one ever asked me questions. Moreover, recently, I think in March this year, our association, including myself, were the co-authors of a practical comment, practical comment on the code of ethics of the judges, and there we analyzed even situations where judges post something on social media and uh, there was an evaluation there of these uh, interdictions or the uh, preservation obligation that the judge has. So I didn't see then, I didn't see now any problem. No one talked to me about that. No one focused or drew my attention to the fact that, uh, look, there is something like from the opinion of the public or opinion of the judges or journalists. There were never questions and uh, moreover in some interviews that I gave journalists actually asking me about the project and uh, my opinion about cases of domestic violence that I examined. And the last question from me on this topic. Since 31st of October, you did not publish any more topic, uh, videos on this topic. If you want, would you like to tell us if, why you did not post any more, or if you don't want, you... I did not continue my um, posts because... I got pregnant and I had a very difficult time uh, talking. If this is very private that you don't want to say, it's okay. I was also hospitalized, so uh, after that I started to study psychology at my master's degree courses, and I did not have time. But this project is not over. You will continue. Yes, I will. Okay, thank you. I don't have any more questions. Okay, thank you very much. Madam Russo, a couple of seconds ago, you mentioned you defined and qualified your activity on Instagram as a project. To clarify it, I mean, can you give us some explanation for me to understand what's the nature of this project as you define it? Is it personal? Is it like volunteering? Or is it a project organized by another entity where you take part in and you promote announced values? I would like some clarity about that. This is a voluntary project. It is a project that is not supported by anyone else. It actually does not 
fund necessitate să fie it does not require any financial support I mean if you saw it's done from my house not using any professional cameras or things with respect to the purpose of the project I uh, I said a lot do you want another clarification about that I mean it is not part of an institution or anything it's a personal project so the idea is just you called it a project and usually project is something very complex you de did not define it as a voluntary activity that's why I asked you to provide some explanation is it like voluntary personally or are you part of a larger project I got you the question I got the question uh, when I say project you know I think giving birth to a child is also a project uh, starting to write uh, your PhD paper is also also project. This is a personal project where a person gathers his or her internal external resources in order to achieve a purpose for him or herself of a society at large. I use the word project to this end. Mrs. Russo, you, you, uh, you explained that you were involved in educational program and we, you were teaching uh, children and teenagers and I want to understand a little bit more, uh, did you have classes or you just provided some written materials just to understand what you mean under the educational program for, for children? This was not in writing, it was like lessons verbally talking to them. I was going to school, I prepared the lesson in advance. I thought, uh, how should I explain some legal notions that are very complex in a way that children would understand? I used the guide that is... Um, developed in that project. It is developed not only for me, but for all judges. This is a national and international network of uh, law professionals, legal professionals that, uh, in a way, teach. But this is voluntary. No one of us was paid for it. It was an initiative to educate children in the spirit of the law for them to understand what are the benefits of the rule of law so that um, children would understand the difference between a legal and an illegal behavior, criminal behavior, or behavior that is not a cr criminal. This is a project that is over by now, it doesn't take place anymore, but that was a very pleasant experience. I had the possibility to see that children in our country are really curious to find out what the law is, uh, what is... Um, What's the personality of judges and prosecutors and uh, attorneys? Because there were people from various uh, legal professions. I was focused on the topic of domestic violence. Now I would like to say a thing that I don't want to be... Well, it's a personal thing, which I don't want to be... In public. Yeah, I don't want it to be public. Uh, okay, was it in school or uh, and how you would do that? You, appro you would approach the director and they would assign you some class because uh, these kind of subjects are quite difficult to introduce in school. So I just want to understand how it, it was organized. This was organized. <clears throat> based on bilateral agreements with the Ministry of Education, with the Ministry of uh, Interior, and it involved both police officers, attorneys, prosecutors, judges, and uh, the specialists from the Anti-Corruption Center. 
aceea organizație non-guvernamentală care s-a ocupat NGO that managed this project it was making a schedule and asking in our internal network if anyone can come and do that during that time I was on maternity leave and um, being an active person myself, I thought that I can take part in that project. And uh, obviously, I mean, if I saw that I'm available on that specific date and I can come, I was announcing them and I was coming. It was me or maybe another judge or another prosecutor or a police officer. And uh, the class was prepared. Maybe we went to colleges as well. This is like um, secondary education. I have one question from, from my side as well, is, uh, and going back to the, uh, the videos about domestic violence and, and uh, uh, all issues related to that. Uh, my question is the following. Do you, um, in your career as a judge, do you also so every now and then deal with issues of domestic violence or is that not part of your competence? I do examine cases related to domestic violence. I also examine civil cases, criminal cases. Uh, I used to, now I am on leave. And I was attentive uh, to violence that probably is not the object of the investigation. For instance, if you talk um, divorce and the woman says she's asking for divorce because she was physically abused by her husband. So I had several cases before me, both in uh, controversial cases, criminal cases and civil cases. And I have the experience to see this phenomenon mm, yeah. on how, and how it happens even in the most difficult cases. And then one, one question as a follow-up to this is, um, suppose the following situation that someone looks at one of the videos where you talk about domestic violence and that person uh, does that on a Wednesday afternoon, a Thursday, goes to court, see you sitting as a judge dealing with an issue of domestic violence and this person is a party to that proceedings. Would you think that the fact that that person has seen you before talking about domestic violence may in whatever shape or form have an impact or effect uh, the perception that that person may have uh, from you as a judge and being able to independently and impartially decide upon a case? Or would you think that there might be an impact there? I don't see the possibility for such a perception to happen. Why? Because when I spoke about domestic violence and about cases, forms of domestic violence, that was not uh, done in an aggressive manner or with uh, my personal opinion showing very negative emotions about it or with the purpose to express uh, the fact that I feel hate towards aggress perpetrators. Moreover, in the videos I also said that the perpetrators also have um, reasons so there, are, there are causes of uh, psychological, psychological reasons why the perpetrator reached such a behavior. And for instance, if a perpetrator having the possibility to see such a video, he may understand or see that in some cases I also explain what he can do if um, he wants not to be aggressive anymore, because having uh, examined cases, and I also expressed that position, I saw that 
several perpetrators. They actually regret having such a behavior that uh, was uh, induced by alcohol consumption. And I see that this phenomenon is not simple. It's just someone is a victim and someone is a perpetrator. I also explained that from Cartman's triangle, uh, where it is visible that the perpetrator in some situations is psychologically a victim. This is a complex phenomenon. And probably someone, I can just uh, intuitively say, maybe someone could have said things, but never, no one said that, no one um, submitted a request for... Uh, I think she's talking about recusal. Yes, no one uh, filed any recusal request uh, based on that fact. Another question to you. You said you are studying for master's degree in psychology. Why didn't you choose master's studies in civil law, criminal law, administrative law, some other law, so that you could improve as a judge? Because psychology is such an area of interest of mine, and I tried to develop my interest further on. This is not uh, related to my activity as a judge, and uh, probably as when, when I finish my education in psychology, I, it is possible I will continue studying law, but I'd like to say that right now, for a judge, it's very important to understand how uh, human psychology works. Uh, when they hear people, when they evaluate the reasons of uh, reasons that are behind committing a crime or offense, when they analyze or appreciate the information uh, acquired during the hearings. So it helped me personally a lot. Does any one of the colleagues still like to have any questions? Okay. And uh, that not being the case, then I would like to give you the floor uh, to make a brief uh, closing uh, comment to the Commission. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I can say that since the moment when the uh, assessment started and until now, I uh, made a retrospective in terms of uh, if from the financial point of view, in my case, the family that I have and uh, the lifestyle that I have, I can say that the salary that a judge has is uh, suitable, is a salary that can cover uh, the needs of a judge. But regretfully, I must say that it is not attractive for a judge. Maybe the society believes differently. I know that society believes differently. But when I analyzed all the income that I had, the situations when I had the need to be helped by people who were around me, I understood that uh, if I become an SEM member, uh, it has to be very well thought um, the remuneration of judges uh, has to be well thought. It's, isn't there talking about a connection between financial integrity and uh, remuneration? Well, anyone could just leave and look for a job with better pay. But anyway, this is an issue that needs a lot of thinking. So for me, this was a discovery that was... Um, Maybe not so, not so pleasant for me, for the system altogether, uh, that the judge in our country is not financially well provided. Okay. 
Thank you. Well, that brings us to the end of uh, the hearing. Um, I thank the candidate, of course. I thank you for uh, answering the questions that we had. Um, the Commission will now withdraw for its deliberations, and as much as possible, the Commission will uh, strive at delivering a decision uh, within a month after the, uh, the date of the hearing of uh, today. And I hereby uh, declare this hearing closed. And thanks again for being with us this afternoon. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What do we do?